I'm going to show you an actual ultrasound guided platelet rich plasma injection that I performed for a patient with knee osteoarthritis. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine doctor and I've performed countless PRP injections to help patients find relief from knee osteoarthritis. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy the injection process is and what the PRP preparation looks like. So what you're seeing here is my assistant spraying ethyl chloride, which is a topical anesthetic used to numb the skin before injections. This cools the skin and decreases pain at the injection site. Next, I'm using a 22 gauge needle to administer a small amount of ropivacaine under the skin. This is another type of local anesthetic. I'm using ultrasound guidance to ensure the needle reaches the joint space accurately. Now, this patient had a bit of swelling in his knee, so I'm switching syringes to aspirate some joint fluid first. It's not a large amount, but this inflammatory fluid, common in arthritis, can be a big source of pain. Removing it before injecting PRP is always a good idea. The clear yellow color that you're seeing is typical for arthritis-related fluid. After aspirating out all the fluid, then we switch to the PRP. For this patient, I'm putting in 8 cc's of platelet-rich plasma. You can see here that I'm using the ultrasound to confirm correct placement of the PRP inside the knee joint. I want to maintain visualization the entire time the medication is going into the knee. After the injection goes in, then we're done. The whole thing from needle entry to aspiration of the joint fluid to the end of the injection took less than two minutes. Here's the same patient, but the other knee. So the first thing that you see me doing is just cleaning the skin. I like to use chloroprep, which is just an antiseptic solution to disinfect the skin. The next thing we do is put a little bit of ultrasound gel on the top of the knee so that I can see inside. I want to make sure we get a good image of the knee joint. Again, I tell my assistant where to spray the ethyl chloride to numb up the skin. Then, same thing, we go in with the 22 gauge needle and administer just a little bit of ropivacaine underneath the skin. You can see me use the ultrasound and make slight adjustments to ensure the needle is in the right spot before switching the syringe to the PRP. Now this knee didn't have any swelling in it, so nothing to aspirate here. We can just go straight to injecting the PRP. Once the PRP is in, everything's done. Start to finish, again, less than two minutes. Now real quickly about the type of PRP that I'm currently using as of the end of 2024. I'm currently doing 60 cc blood draws for one knee joint. 120 cc blood draw for two knees. This is the m site PRP kit which uses a double spin centrifugation protocol. This is what the PRP looks like after the first spin. You can see the red blood cells settled on the bottom, the plasma layer on the top, and in the middle there's a very thin buffy coat layer. What we want to do is take off all the plasma layer as well as a very small portion of the buffy coat layer and use that for the second centrifuge spin. Here's what it looks like after the second spin. You can see the red cells are still separated and the plasma cells are on the bottom. After some further processing, we have our final PRP product. This is what we injected into the patient's knee. So we go from 60 cc's of whole blood down into 8 cc's of platelet-rich plasma. This should have about 10 to 12 billion platelets that we inject into the knee. Lastly, if you're looking to learn more about PRP injections, check out this next video where I go through everything you need to know about platelet-rich plasma.